Hey guys, how are we doing? Crypto Insight UK here, bringing you another video. I just wanted to update my thoughts on everything that's going on. Like, it's hard to communicate everything over there on X, so I thought I'll try and record a video. So the first video I've recorded with um, my new laptop and mic and stuff, so there could be some issues, but I just wanted to try and get over a more like broad thought process of mine, so you can see what I'm actually thinking rather than just getting snippets of my thoughts. It's super stormy and rainy here in Dubai. Um, we're supposed to be at a conference today, but it's literally being rained off. And so if you hear the lightning and thunder in the background, like there's nothing I can really do about that. So let's start with Bitcoin and like what's going on. I just want to show that like Bitcoin's basically just chopping in a range and it has been since like early March. There isn't too much to update on Bitcoin right now. Um, obviously, we're right near the bottom of the range. If we uh, look at the fixed range volume profile, it makes me think that we're probably going to have some sort of bounce up um, towards this sort of region. Yeah, here we go, in and around here. At like 67-ish thousand, somewhere where I could see that we could bounce up to. So that's why I expect in the short term for Bitcoin. Maybe we come and sweep below here and I can show you some um, volume, uh, liquidity pools, sorry, like later on. But what I'm just going to get into are some of my thoughts with altcoins, people are asking for XRP updates. Honestly, guys, while things like this are happening, just expect things to get wrecked. Um, just while we have like geopolitical tensions, I think there's a lot of manipulation going on here. Like You see headlines like, oh, the Hong Kong ETF has been approved, but it's not even open for trading. Everyone's like talking about how it's going to make an influx of capital uh, come into the market, which is... In my opinion, designed to get retail in, probably wreck them a little bit more, bring the price down so people can accumulate where they want to, the whales that is. Um, and then we probably head up from there at some point. I've been talking a lot about Bitcoin dominance. I'm going to show you my thoughts on that right now. Basically, this is Bitcoin dominance. I'm going to take you to the weekly and show you what I've been thinking. I wrote about this being a previous alt, previous alt season over here, 2017 alt season, and this being the 2021 like run up for alt. Both happened in and around the 70% dominant, 71% dominance of Bitcoin. But my long-term thesis is that Bitcoin has diminishing dominance over time. So what I'm thinking is we bounce, we have like a bit of a dead cat bounce, and then we continue to go down uh, for Bitcoin as we um, use previous support as resistance and then head lower. This is just a thesis of mine because I think as the crypto space matures we'll see more and more use cases outside of bitcoin i expect them to take some market cap or some market share like ethereum obviously is much bigger this cycle and has stayed around than it was in the previous cycles so that's where that thesis basically comes from not just with ETH, but i think other cryptos um are going to do well as well as obviously you guys know that I, I like xrp on this channel and i think that that has a run-up in it somewhere when that happens where that happens obviously we've not been able to nail that yet but this doesn't mean anything's changed, just means that the time hasn't been right yet. All my thesis remain the same around XRP and I'm going to get into that later. So yeah, that's my thought process on Bitcoin. Obviously I could be wrong because there's definitely an argument for a range for me here as well. Like it's just obviously very roughly drawn. Um, we've had a bounce, could we just be ranging between uh, here at 73% and the lows at 39%. So could we rally all the way back up to 70s? 73%-ish, and then come down. Yes, very potentially. Very potentially. I don't want to say we couldn't, but it's just not my personal thesis. Like, I think this looks kind of a weak move. Time will tell, like, these next few weeks while we're up at this sort of area here at the about around 57 to 58.3%. That's when I'm really watching it. One thing I have talked about is that we didn't quite reach this box, um, which was the previous support look where all these wicks closed. Um, I use a mixture of wicks and bodies when I'm, when I'm using when I'm doing TA, so we haven't actually seen up to a touch of this box of what I talked about the other day. So are we going to start to see a reversal here? I did speak about this volume coming on the, on the um, selling candle, but we didn't get the engulfing candle. We have come down, and I talked about, wow, there's a big lightning strike there. Um, I did talk about this area of support here. 
So that's basically where we bounced a bit yesterday, did, and we did start to come into that. It didn't look like it was going to bounce, but then it did actually uh, reject this box or use that now potentially as support. So we could potentially see a push up here. However, the volume was lower. Give me one second. I don't know if you can hear that thunder. Um, the volume was lower, so I, I couldn't put too much weight on it. Um, and the bounce today, let's see what happens. We've still got obviously 17 hours of the daily candle. Um, if, the, if this candle goes green, the volume is already as much as it was yesterday and we've still got 17 hours of the day left. So today could be a more decisive day in terms of like understanding what Bitcoin dominance is going to do. Definitely keep your eye on that if you're looking at uh, altcoins and you're looking at altcoin performance in the next few days. If you want to see like, how Bitcoin is going to perform. Obviously, the RSI has been flirting with like a bearish, a bearish cross, so I've got my eye on that as well. So they're just my thoughts around Bitcoin dominance. In regards to XRP specifically, people have been talking about this. I'm going to show you XRP against the dollar to start with. We've been looking at XRP within this range for a long while, and if we break out of the range, we're looking for 120 as a minimum target. By the way, guys, I'm doing all this on the fly, like without any real editing. I just wanted to get my thoughts across, as I said. Um, I, if we can break out the top of this range, we're looking for a $1.20 minimum target for XRP. What happened with this recent flush? We've come down, we've broken below the range, but we've actually just wicked into this area so far. We've had no daily candle closes below uh, the bottom of this range, as we spoke about for a lot of different well, weeks now. I think it was hundreds of days of accumulation in this range. Let's have a look. 280 days if you start uh, the accumulation from around when we had the uh, XRP is not a security from Judge Torres. If we make it accurate, we've got 278 days in this range and we have yet to close a candle below, still even with the recent flush out. We are in the bottom of the RSI as well, which again suggests to me that the selling is probably close to, if not over. Does that mean we can't get a further flush out? No, as I was talking about again with the Bitcoin dominance. If that Bitcoin dominance pushes us to try and close that gap that I talked about in the first place, so this gap here, from where we are right now with Bitcoin, uh, it would be another few percent in Bitcoin dominance, 2.97%, and that's enough to really ruin some altcoins. Could that flush XRP down? I don't know, like potentially. I, it's not my base case, that's why I've written about this, it's, this is why I, I post this TA. I always could be wrong, but I'm just showing you my opinions and what I see in the charts. So my base case would be that XRP probably is a good place to be like dollar cost averaging in. It's at the bottom of a range and I expect us to increase in value. So that's as simple as it gets, to be honest, in terms of XRP. If you look at the fixed range volume, Oh no, I just clicked on to link accidentally. Um, let's go back. If we look at the fixed range volume here for XRP, we are literally touching that. So that's brilliant. Look, if you look at that, it's another confluence as why uh, as to why that could be a good entry point right about here. So dollar cost averaging into XRP could be a good play right now. If we do lose this range, I will be looking here at 36 cent um, to increase my position, but. Right now, it's looking all right where it is, and I, if I wanted more exposure, I'd probably be having a look right about now. So ETH is another one I've been looking at recently. It doesn't look as strong as, I, as it was looking um, before we lost this grey box. Could ETH come back down to this sort of area here, $2,500, very potentially, um, for a retest of that range. Another thing I wanted to just check in on was... Uh, the market cap of crypto in general, which is just, it's actually looking quite healthy, holding this sort of uh, last local high before the capitulation last cycle as support before we start to move up further. And let's have a look at total two, which is, uh, which is the crypto market without um, Bitcoin. Let's just take some of my drawings off. I don't know what I've been drawing on there. Just looking at loads of different things. We've basically back-tested the start of an impulsive move here. So we've broken out of a range. We've come back and accumulated on top of the range, then broken out. We've come back, we've back-tested that accumulation point. We could continue from here. And total two, uh, and total three, which is everything without both Ethereum and Bitcoin, is printing the same sort of structure. Let's see if we've got any drawings on here. Yeah, look, there's the range. In fact, a bit, oh, 
great drawing, I'd say that's the range. Um, so we accumulated within that range for a while. We struggled to break out some pretty good wipe off accumulation. Um, so the last point of support is on a strength area, we push out, and then we accumulate on top of that area. So if we could show that this, show this here like this. So we accumulated, we back tested, and we broke out for that impulsive move there, bang, and then we've come down and we've wicked just into the top of that, but without validating the structure because we haven't come any lower. So as of right now, total three looks pretty good too. So obviously don't look awful, and um, we're just in a time of uncertainty. It doesn't mean we can't flush down again, have another little test before we go up. We're in the chop zone at the minute, and I said on, on Twitter, it's a good dip to buy because I, I really think it is. Um, We've obviously got the potential geopolitical uncertainty that I've been talking about. Looking at alts right here and, and dollar cost averaging is probably all right. Looking at Bitcoin and dollar cost averaging is probably all right. If you're playing with leverage, be careful. I do expect a push up to the fixed range volume that I talked about, but then do we come down and sweep these lows here where everyone's probably going to have their stop losses before we go and head higher. I looked at Kadana yesterday, tried to get in a trade on that because I think that the risk to reward on that trade is looking like quite nice. Let's have a look where I showed you from. I wanted to trade up to this sort of area, 58 cents from where we were. I think we're bottoming in and around here, at least for the short term, same sort of structure and idea as Bitcoin. Creating some sort of bottom here potentially um, and then potentially push up towards that zone there that I've, I've highlighted. We've got the RSI. Um, we showed, I think it showed a uh, bullish divergence here with a higher high look on the RSI and a lower low in price action. I still probably think this is not a bad shout as a play uh, up to that 58.40 sort of cent or 0.584 cent uh, for Cardano there. Sol's another one I've been looking at, it's been getting absolutely battered uh, recently. I did call that out and I did um, actually have a short on Sol. That I closed like here, like an idiot because I saw the news about the Hong Kong ETF, emotionally traded that, and got myself burnt, basically, so it's my own fault. Um, but again, Seoul's been battered. Could it be bottoming around here somewhere? The same sort of structure look with the uh, RSI. We created, actually, it's the opposite structure, so that's more of a bearish divergence there for Seoul. But I do feel like Seoul's been getting overly battered recently, and that is why I am looking at that for a potential move. It would probably be up towards this sort of area here, which is probably where the fixed range volume comes in, I'm not sure. Okay, a little bit higher than where I, where I expected. Um, in and around the 182, so you could, if you can get a good entry on it, potentially push us up back towards 182 and a half. We've obviously got this um, area of, of like trade in here. These areas often act as support or resistance, and that's obviously where we're getting stuck out now. If we move this, to this area as well. Let's see what changes. Here we go. Look, they, you can see that cluster that I was just talking about there. Uh, we've bounced nicely on that, and then could we make that move back up to the next um, fixed range volume profile at 185? Could be a trade right there. I'm going to have a look if there's any entries. But again, it depends on Bitcoin, the geopolitical incentive, as I said. If there's more going on in the world, it's going to flush Bitcoin down, um, which I don't think is too unpredictable on a technical structure um, because there will be loads of uh, stop losses in this area so it would make sense for one more flush down before we move up and if that happens like Sol and everything else will get destroyed and Sol could probably come down a little bit further than um, than it already has let's have a look where would be a logical level for Sol to come down to this this area here at 100 makes sense on a nice round number of 100 there as well if we do get one more flush out that's where probably where i'd be looking if we get anything like 57 dollars then uh we're probably struggling a little bit for crypto um but yeah that's probably where i'd be looking at for sol as well other than that guys i haven't got too much more to report everything's in the same sort of boat right now just don't like get yourself blown up i've been blown up a few times trying to catch a bottom I don't know whether it's just whether I'm trading out of boredom or not. I think it probably is is a, an aspect of that. Um, but I do think that we will have a bounce at some point, and the bounce will probably be quite aggressive before we have potentially a further move down. So that, that's what I'll be looking at, guys. If you can catch some sort of bounce, cool. Um, there might be a little trade in there for you. 
that's what I'm, I keep trying to post that on Twitter. Hopefully we'll catch one. But you only need to catch one if you make if you hit in a six to one risk to reward. And I've been blown I think two two like on the last two bounces that I've tried to catch. So as long as I hit one of the next four in a six to one risk to reward, it's looking all right. But doesn't mean I will. It's, that's how trading works. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, guys. Um, I just try yeah, I just try to show you what I'm thinking right now and. Stay safe out there and don't panic like it's just crypto, like this this happens. It happens and it ha and it's happened previously in the other cycles, it will happen again in this cycle. As more liquidity, like more money gets printed and assets inflate and especially as institutions come in, remember they're the emotional manipulators and the master chart like analysts, they're going to manipulate the price all over. Um, and if we have geopolitical uncertainty, everyone's in panic stations, more emotion means more liquidations or more pumps. Um, and gold's like ripping. We talked about gold before. Quickly touch on gold. Gold's pushing again. So that's a lot of money in gold right now. Like at, at two point two thousand three hundred eighty-five dollars, it's moved up what like twenty percent in the last like what forty days. Let's go from like where it's moved. It's up in forty days. It's up eleven percent. But I was thinking about this area here actually. So if we go from the actual breakout here. Um, it's up like 16.8 percent in in what 45-ish days. I'm not quite sure on that accurately. That's a big move on a that was at 12 trillion dollars and now it's at 15 trillion dollars. That's like more than the whole of the cryptocurrency market cap just moved into gold in the last 40 days. So it's telling us there's some uncertainty, uh, something potentially brewing around the world, which isn't exactly the best thing to talk about and it's not exactly great for anyone. DXY is trying to push but again I don't think it I actually don't think it looks that strong. Like people were saying that the DXY looks strong. It's in the overbought area already on the RSI. I would suggest there's probably I don't know if you can use fixed range volume on here. But areas of interest are like where we're coming to one now. Like again the DXY is another thing that's just basically ranging. We just look here and here. It's just so you could argue that's the range, you could argue the range is here and these are deviations above and below the range, um, deviation there and a deviation here. Another deviation potentially, but we are forming high lows. I wouldn't expect us to go too much higher here with the DXY, especially being in the oversold area. What I would like to see is price probably come up to here and the RSI come up higher than it was before. That I then probably feel like we're going to head down or actually even more bullish would be if the RSI stayed lower and price went higher but I don't think that's going to happen right now so let's see what happens guys but I think the DXY is basically chopping within a range as well if we have geopolitical uncertainty the dollar probably strengthens because everyone's going to panic and move to dollars uh, Gold probably strengthens more because gold is the hedge against the fiat currency in general. But aside from that, guys, as soon as there is like confirmation on uncertainty or not uncertainty around the world, one way or another, we will get some sort of quantitative easing, easing of some sort, whether it's called QE or not. We'll get some sort of stimulus into election year. If we go to war, they'll print money, and all these things are good for assets, whether it feels like that or not right now that is my long-term play it's just a short term that we're trying to nail down but yeah hope you guys enjoyed if you did please like like comment and share with a friend um don't panic buy if you've got cash buy spot dca in if you want to try and catch a bounce then be my guest like there's some good risk to reward options out there but it's just whether we continue to flush down or not I couldn't tell you exactly whether we will or not right now my best guess is that we have a bounce coming soon how high that bounce is going to take is I presume it's just a bounce before a further flush down but we could also bounce heavily and hard like depending on what happens let's see let's see um, 